Hello and welcome back to another Thoughts Per Episode, House of a Dragon edition, the season finale of both the show and this show. This show's season finale is obviously more important. In this episode, dragons danced. Well, they didn't really dance, they kind of chomped, but we'll get to that in a bit. Obviously, last fo- ep- f- but Whoa, what was that? Obviously, last episode focused on Alicent and the Greens and how they reacted to King Viserys' death. And this episode focuses on Rhaenyra and the Blacks and how they focus, or how they respond to King Viserys' death and King... Aegon's unruly ascension. This show has done a really good job of trying to make it on both sides, both Alicent and Rhaenyra, have it be more nuanced than what we're told in Fire and Blood, which makes a lot of sense because Fire and Blood is told to us through various historical accounts, so the full truth is never given to us. It's more like a history book where nobody quite knows what happens for sure, and rumours are more likely to be made out to be true, uh, and behaviours and characteristics are more likely to be exaggerated. So it's nice that we get this whole show where Alicent and Rhaenyra obviously have their differences so obviously the historical dudes are going to focus on that and be like oh that clearly informs everything that happened but the truth is more nuanced much like the truth in real life it's more nuanced it's harder to understand um it's it's got more bumps it's not just straight cut cheese and I was surprised to see they even continued doing that as far as the actual first blood of the Dance of Dragons conflict. I mean it's been a long time since I read Fire and Blood but I'm pretty sure it was never mentioned that both Lucerus, was it Lucerus or Jocerus? I think it was Lucerus, right? Both Lucerus and Amond lost control of their dragons and didn't mean to end up in that much conflict. Obviously it's still Amond's fault because he uh, like followed uh, Lucerus and was like provoking him um, and was trying to like scare him and uh, probably did actually want that eye. But you can see, um, I mean, first of all, we see uh, Lucerus's dragon attack <laughs> Vega, which is a very bad idea, don't do that. And uh, you can see Lucerus screaming, Arax, was it Arax? Arax, no, don't, Arax, stop it. Um, so he's losing control over his dragon, which is what you would expect because he's an inexperienced dragon rider and he's still, his dragon is still young. But Vega is the oldest fucking dragon on the planet and she ain't gonna take that shit. Uh, so then Aemond, who is still relatively young despite his uh, very competent appearance, uh, <laughs> by which I mean he looks older than he should be. He loses control of Vagar, who retaliates by fucking eating Arax and killing Lucerus in the process, which of course is going to be the thing, as we see in like the final shot of Rhaenyra reacting to the news, uh, I think that is going to be the final straw that sparks full-on all-out war, which both ironically Rhaenyra and Alicent have been trying to forestall. It's fucking fascinating how this has been adapted to not just be like a, a like blow by blow retelling of events but also be like here's more information let's make it more tragic than it already was um and i love like the guy who Eamon's actor i don't know his name but he did a really good job of looking like oh fuck <laughs> after vega kills uh lucerus because if i was Rhaenyra, i wouldn't I mean, first of all, they don't go, oh, hey, when, when fucking Otto Hightower walks up to the fucking Dragonstone Fortress like a goddamn baller, uh, <laughs> walking into a lion's den and being like, yo, what's up? My plan was to kill you, but my daughter sent me here to make friends with you. That's obviously not going to work. But he didn't stop and go, oh, yeah, your father actually... Um, the reason we're doing all this is because your father did, actually. Like, he doesn't even bother with that shit, probably because he doesn't believe in it. But, like, in a similar way, I don't think they're going to bother telling Rhaenyra it was an accident. Because, I mean, if you were Rhaenyra, how would you react? You would react as if sh- the same way she would have reacted if they'd told her that Viserys changed his mind just before he died. Fuck off, are you serious? By the way, I really liked that whole scene on the Dragonstone Bridge of... There was so much like, oh, fuck off, are you fucking serious? Shut the fuck up. Like, there was a lot of that. And it was just very, like, a very real way <laughs> of portraying the reactions of, like... Really? You're, you're gonna come here and tell me that you have the Iron Throne, but you'll you'll let my sons be squires and cupbearers? Oh, thank you so much. You're so generous. But yeah, poor Lucerus, man. When he was having that conversation with Rhaenyra, and Rhaenyra was like, look, I gave you Storm's End. It's the easy one. You know, Baratheons are our buddies. They're only a very short flight away. You'll be welcomed as like a hero. Uh, that was like, I, I, I almost had convulsions from the amount of red flags which were being fucking 
thrown in my face. I was like, oh, this boy's fucking dead. This boy's first blood. This boy ain't surviving this story. And, you know, credit where credit's due. I thought he did pretty good showing. He he pronounced himself, hey, I'm here from with a message from the Queen. Uh, and they led him to Lord Boris, was it? And even after he saw Aemon, he was like... I'm a messenger, not a warrior. I'm not going to fight you. And it was Aemon who did all the provoking. Lucerus did nothing wrong. Hashtag Lucerus did nothing wrong. If it is Lucerus and not Jocerus. I'm pretty sure it's Lucerus. There's so many of them. It's so hard to keep track. And you just get such a... The actor did such a good job. You get such a good impression from Lucerus of like this boy who's frightened but is overcoming his fears to do his duty to his mother and his queen. Like when you see Vega fucking just like in the in the fog leering at um at arax it's like oh shit <laughs> chekhov's dragon it's it's so good it's such a good it's so sad as well my god it is so sad and that's the whole dance of dragons thing right it's just sad oh also aemon's sapphire in his eye looked baller as hell i didn't think it was going to look quite that clean but it did do you think it itches i feel like that would make your eye itch but yeah, that man just gets scarier every episode. So it was actually pretty interesting to see him look like, oh shit, when he killed Lucerus, uh, because he didn't mean to. Like, it's an interesting insight to his character. Like, yes, he provoked uh, the conflict. Yes, he he's a little bit unhinged. He really did want that eye, but like, he didn't want to kill him. Although maybe, maybe I'm being too generous. Maybe he just didn't want to be like, <laughs> maybe he just didn't want to do things he wasn't ordered to. Maybe he didn't want to be a bad son, a bad uh, prince. I'm skipping over a lot of the first half of the episode. Rhaenyra unfortunately has a stillbirth, which is very sad. Uh, and they, they don't like gloss over it either. There's a lot of interesting power dynamics between Rhaenyra and Daemon in this episode because again while they love each other and they've been husband and wife for ages and they've got a good dynamic you've still got this thing of Daemon part of him wanting power um, and like there's a moment when um, is it Eric or Eric? <laughs> One of them hands him the crown to give to her he's like looking at the crown like I put this on my head i mean i don't think that's really what's going through his mind but you know what i mean like it's like looking at the crown and like being reminded of his brother and the whole history of their conflict and like you know now he's like crowning another instead of having power for himself but that's okay because he loves her and he's gonna be like the king consort or whatever although he's still referred to as prince so it might be more of a prince philip situation here but yeah this whole episode was just fantastic and it's the end it's over we've got to wait uh, I'm going to guess a year, I'm going to hope not more than a year, for more House of a Dragon, which is sad because it's such a good fucking show. Can you believe it? They stuck the landing, all 10 episodes. I mean, it wasn't perfect, uh, but it was, I would say, about the level of uh, quality and excitement that the good quote-unquote good seasons of Game of Thrones had and I don't want to go over my thoughts that I already gave uh in the first few episodes when we realized that the show was good but I do just kind of want to say it's nice to be an optimist and then to be vindicated for being an optimist because I did mention when this show was first announced it wasn't originally called House of a Dragon uh what was it called because I was looking over some more tweets of mine I think it was originally called Blood of a Dragon um but uh that aside when it was first announced, I was like, well, this isn't going to have the same problems as Game of Thrones because the text is finished and George R.R. Martin is going to be more involved uh, and all this stuff. Uh, but people were just like, no, Game of Thrones ending was bad, therefore this show will be bad. And that's the kind of thing that kind of drives me by me because I'm like, we, have ez we know why Game of Thrones failed and we have evidence as to why this show will not repeat those problems. I'm more concerned about the uh, Jon Snow show that they're developing. I think that one could repeat the problems of the final few seasons of Game of Thrones, but um, I, I'll take it anyway because I'm... Uh, I'm a slut for Game of Thrones, so. But I'm just so happy it's good. Um, I'm just so happy that we can finally stop dancing around the thing of like, oh, will this show still be good in a few episodes? You know, like with a new cast that's coming. And yeah, yes, it is. They're all amazing. And I'm so happy it exists. And they've said it's going to take like three or four seasons to, or at least George R. R. Martin believes it's going to take three or four seasons to properly tell the Dance of a Dragon story. Uh, which I don't, again, I still don't remember a lot of what happens in Fire and Blood. I've forgotten a lot. I read it years ago. So I don't know how much more of a Dance of Dragons story there is to tell, but it definitely does feel like it's only just beginning. I know Alt Shift X referred to this series as mostly prologue for the events which are to come. And also apparently 
apparently the showrunners uh, have interest in telling other parts of Westerosi history from Fire and Blood if this does well. And I don't know about you, but I think this has done pretty well so far. So as long as they can continue to keep this quality up, I will be bloody pleased. But that's going to do it. That was season one of House of the Dragon. I'm super happy. Uh, I'm also happy I can unsubscribe from Now TV again because uh, I'm subscribed to far too many uh, <laughs> streaming services right now. So it'd be nice to get some money back. I'll see you all back here for whatever new stupid plan Now TV is pushing on us in regards to ads and quality. Oh boy, uh, if you liked this video, leave a comment, let me know what you thought about the series as a whole, or this episode in general. Uh, leave a like if you liked the video, it helps the channel a ton, and maybe subscribe for more House of a Dragon in like a year, and some completely irrelevant things in the meantime. <laughs> I do such a good job of selling myself.